All right, welcome to this lesson called Chasing Perfection. This lesson is all about quality control. Now that your book is back, we want to go through it and we have to ensure that it's at the absolute highest quality possible so this book does as well as possible. This, in all honesty, is one of the things I used to never do when I first started publishing. It was also a much different publishing time back then but over the years, it's been proven that the better your book is, the higher the quality is, the longer it's going to sell for and the more money it's going to make. So this has become such an essential process in the self-publishing um, process now. So let's dive into it. All right. So you got your book back. So now what? Well, now really the fun begins because we get to ensure that this book is exactly the way you want it. So we're going to go through this book from cover to cover and make sure it's the best possible book for you. Now, this is very important. Best is not perfect. You do not need a perfect book to build a very successful business on Amazon. You need the best book possible to do that, but not perfect. If you're trying to achieve a perfect book, you're gonna get so caught up in this process that your book's never gonna end up getting published because you're gonna keep looking to make it better and better and better. The great thing about it, Amazon is you can actually, after you've published your book, if you want to make an, a, change, a, a change to it or adjustment or an improvement to it, you can just upload the improvements to it and Amazon will make those changes to your book. So that's not an issue whatsoever. We just want the best book possible. Chasing perfection is what we want, but perfection is something that's going to be unattainable. So don't become consumed uh, in this whole process. All right, so editing versus proofreading. There's a massive, a massive difference between these two, and this is what helps set apart good from great books. Now, the best authors in the world don't proofread their books, but they do all the editing of their books. You saw that back in the uh, video about James Patterson, right? He doesn't go through and, and he doesn't do all the spell checking and everything on the books but he reads and does the editing of every single one of his books. So you think about a chef in a kitchen, right? I'm, I'm really big into cooking, so this example I can relate to. Chefs don't just cook the food, you know, they're, they're like the conductor of the orchestra, so to speak, with the orchestra being the kitchen and, and the other chefs in there. They taste the food to ensure it meets their requirements. Right, not the other person who's making the food's requirements, the sh the head chef's requirements, and this goes goes for all the food being sent out, not just the meals they're preparing. This is how you gain control of a kitchen and ensure the food is of the highest standards to the chef's standards. So in this case, we want to ensure that your book is to the standards that you want it, not to the standards that your writer wants it or or thinks it should be at. The final editing is something that cannot be outsourced. This needs to be done by you to ensure that the book meets your expectations. And this is why, this is one of the reasons it's so key that working with your writer during the entire writing process is so vital because as you're, as they're writing and as you're reading and you're communicating back and forth with them, it helps speed up the editing process. So let's first define what's proofreading, what's what's editing, so you understand the terms, because this was something that I didn't fully understand until I started doing more research into this. So proofreading, you look at proofreading as just the spelling, the grammar, and the punctuation, that this is mostly the surface level stuff. And that's what most people think editing is, right? I, for example, thought that was editing as well. Editing is way more in depth though, right? We're looking at the overall structure of the book. You think back to the Triforce of a great book, right? Back in week three, right? The content, the engagement, and the structure of the book. That is what we're really focused on here when we're looking at editing. How is the information laid out? How is it coming across? What is the message that the information is giving? giving that is what editing is all about does the writer address everything you wanted to address and in the manner that you're looking for that's the main question we're, we're looking for as we're going through the the editing process here so what to do now first thing is um read your entire book from start to finish 
the whole thing. You want to see this whole process as a customer would see it and experience it. Now, you, you can't just read this book like you would normally read a regular book, right? Whether you're a faster or a slow to reader, that's irrelevant here. You're reading, you're not reading for information. You're not reading to gain the information from this book. You're reading to ensure that the information is correct and it flows properly the way you want it to flow. So it's a, it's a different type of reading that you're gonna be you're gonna be doing here. I hope that makes sense. So you're gonna read very slowly. Ensure that every line, every sentence, every paragraph, every page makes sense and is coming across the way you want it to come across. Now, if you're like me, somebody who's very fidgety and, and very, you know, type A personality, this is a very tedious process, but it's necessary. It, it, this is absolutely necessary to produce the book that you want to produce. Now, there are tools that can help you with this process, and I'll, I'll show you those, but this process is something that can take, you know, sometimes a few days if your book is, is going to require, you know, lots of changes, lots of editing or you're just super slow at doing this type of stuff like I am, or um, if your book is all on point, and this could take a day. So yeah, don't feel bad about making the changes to your book. It's your book. If you want something rewritten because you don't like how it sounds, or you don't like what the writer decided to do, uh, telling like a story or giving an example, let them know, hey, I, I want this part rewritten. Here's what I'm looking for. Um, please go and rewrite this part you've hired them it's to to write the book that you want to that you want created um so you want to make sure that it's aligned with what you are thinking after reading this book ask yourself would i leave a five-star review for this book if not fix it right you got to keep fixing it until that question is yeah it answers all my questions i feel good about it i'd leave a five-star review for this book don't publish it if you're not going to leave a five-star review for your own book. That's just stupid. All right. Now, we're going to read through the entire book using an online tool called Grammarly. Um, this tool, it's it's an editing, it's called an editing tool, but it's, it's really not. But you, you'll be able to find any possible spelling and punctuation mistakes that were missed. Sometimes there are some that are missed. Sometimes there's not. But this tool will probably help with the proofreading portion, not so much the editing portion that I described earlier. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use it and how to set it up because based on this, this online tool, how you set it up, it can find different types of mistakes that you may or may not want found. So I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up so it uh, works with what we are doing in the book creation process and it doesn't create more work for you that'll make more sense when we go into it now what do you do if you are not happy with something and you feel you need a revision okay now most writing companies like the urban writers they do offer a number of revisions keep in mind a revision is not a complete rewrite though right very very rarely should you ever get your book back and you're like, this whole book is garbage. I need you to rewrite the entire book. If that's the case, that's a 100% on you. Because what did you not do? You were not working with your writer now. You were not watching them and reading and following up and asking questions. And most importantly, reading what they were writing throughout the entire process. You should have caught that back in the introduction or chapter one or two at the max. But so having a section or two or a chapter rewritten is normal in the editing process. So remember, you want the book to be as good as possible. So don't be afraid to go back to the writer and ask to have certain parts changed. But if you've done a good job working with your writer, you should be getting a book that's about 90 to 99% back, or 90 to 99% of what you want the very first time. All right, so Grammarly. Grammarly is the tool we're gonna use. So. Um, we use it only for the proofreading mistakes and um, that the proofreading team might have missed. Um, humans make mistakes. It happens. Um, this is why we go over things multiple times to ensure that this book is as clean and error-free as possible. We do not want to use Grammarly for editing. As good as the tool is, 
It does not know the type of tone, feeling you want your book to come through with. So it could trigger warnings or sentence structure errors based on what it thinks is correct, but not what you're looking for. And that is one of the biggest misconceptions with this tool. So I'm gonna show you um, one of the books um, as an example and how to set up Grammarly and, and all about that. So let's now take a look at Grammarly. All right, so go to uh, Grammarly.com and uh, if you already have Grammarly, you might go to a slightly different page. Um, if you don't have it, uh, it's it's pretty straightforward to get signed up. So the plan that you want, they offer three, uh, your free one, your premium, and your business one. And the way it works is there's a online web platform, which I'm gonna show you, that's how I use it. But it's also, uh, it's a built-in web um, Chrome extension as well. So it uh, it's just one of those things for doing emails and everything, just having a really high quality spell checker um, and proofreader, um, more so than the, the ones that come with your computer. Like I know the one on my Mac is absolute trash. The one in Microsoft and pages, those are usually pretty trashy as well. This is just a much better option. So the plan that we, we want is the premium plan here. And I think it worked out to about 11 bucks a month. Um, from what I remember, it's, it's really cheap. The reason we want premium is because we want plagiarism detection as well. That's one of the main things that we want that's only offered in the premium. So you can go through and check out um, some of these things. Uh, a lot of the features here we're not going to worry about in for our clarity, engagement, and whatnot um, in terms of our books. Um, but, uh, oh, here you go. And the plan is, yeah, eleven sixty six a month. I think when you pay for the year or whatever it is, so relatively cheap. So go ahead, sign up for that. And let's take a look at um, a book here. Okay, so I uploaded, You can. there's a maximum that you can upload to Grammarly. And so I just upload like chunks of it at a time. And um, I this is where I do all my, my proofreading and editing, so to speak. Now, um, I'm going to show you how we want to set this up because there's a couple different ways of that you can actually set up your your Grammarly, and that's going to change the way it's going to detect certain words, phrases, sentences, structure, tonality, and a whole bunch of different things. Remember, most of this has already been done through um, the urban writers and through their in-house editing team and how the writer. Um, you know, wanted to come across w working with you with the book. Grammarly doesn't know the way you want this book to come across. So the tone, it might be saying, um, so it's telling you to rephrase the sentence. So it's telling you to rephrase that sentence, but you might want it actually the way it is because that fits the entire tone of the book. Or you want to be very careful not to get caught up in all of these 204 suggestions. We're actually ignoring pretty much all of them. The only ones we're gonna pay attention to are any spelling issues. Um, so you can set up goals, and the best way to set it up, general, neutral, and general. Um, these are experimental, um, but if I was to do anything, it'd be just neutral. But once again, we don't want Grammarly to detect tone, so I might just leave that off. And intent, we don't want them to, to, to do the intent because um, that's going to mess up how the writer has written the book. So um, going through it first, we want to see if there's any spelling spelling errors. Let's take a look. I don't believe there's going to be any. Right, so these are just little things that it's being just based on how the settings are and everything that it's telling you to do, like choose a different word. It, it's... This is all the stuff that you can ignore. All right. So this is what you do for that. Um, okay. Then you're basically going to read through your book, go through it. Uh, you can also, as you use it, Grammarly, it's going to learn what you like and what you don't like. So you got to play around with the settings. And, um, you know, when it, sees, when it sees that you're constantly ignoring certain grammar 
what it thinks is an error or grammar suggestions or whatever, it'll pop up this thing. Would, would you like to always ignore this? And so it'll, it'll stop coming up. Yeah. See, we don't readability. It might give you something and it might sound better for you. That's your take. If you want to change it and listen to it, but don't get so caught up in this. These are not issues you need to bring up with the writing company. This is just how Grammarly works. Um, so the big thing we do want to check out is the plagiarism. Now, the most important thing you want to realize when you're checking for plagiarism is you do not want to pay attention to the percentage that it's going to give you here in a second. You want to pay attention to what it's actually referring to. The reason being is a lot of people think percentage is the big issue, but that's not the issue. Percentage is, is, is not the issue. It's the block of text that could cause, cause an issue here. So this is a really good example. Look at this. So right here, so 5% plagiarism, not worried about that at all. It says there's 14 fragments. So I'm going to take a look at those 14. Now, 14 sources on the web. So we're going to take a look at this. So this block, that would be something I'd look into. And um, I might adjust, rewrite it myself, just because I'll rewrite it faster in like two seconds than sending it in to get something rewritten. Um, but it might just be that they quoted something from this, um, from from whatever this is. So I'd have to go check, take a look at that. Let's go look at the next one. Okay, so something like this, the virus is made up of two main. That is completely irrelevant because it's it's just a couple words together. So those are the things that we want to um, search. Once again, the only way to prevent a virus from, that's nothing that you need to be worried about. Okay, no. What we're looking for is a block of text, not a couple random words that match a couple random words somewhere else online. That's, uh, that's not what plagiarism is considered. Yeah, so the only thing I'd really take a closer look at is this little thing up here. But that's how you do your plagiarism um, test. But yeah, so that's pretty much exactly how you're going to use Grammarly. There's really not much to it. Uh, you can go in and uh, there's like suggestions, a whole bunch of different types of settings that you can play around with. But like I said, I like to tr try to keep it as neutral and as, you know, as, as simple as possible because I'm really using it for spell checking, um, grammar and punctuation not so much everything else it's it's trying to it's it's trying to tell me here so um but yeah there are a lot of cool stats and like it's readability score it's eh, you know but uh yeah anyways um hope that helps and uh that wraps it up for this lesson